We will get to discuss the, the history of heat rounds leading up to this in a little while, but you know, it's just worth noting, everyone made wrong decisions at this moment of tank history. Uh, armor, very thin, only 80 millimeters on parts of the front of the turret and even less than the uh, Leopard 1. So it had about uh, 20 mils on the sides, uh, 30, 35 mils on certain sides and uh, certain closer to the front and only 60 mils on the front of the hull, but very heavily sloped. So just adding to the armor. But essentially they decided to go for the idea of the same as the Leopard 1 of, you know what, uh, heat rounds can go through any armor that we're gonna th throw on these things. So let's just make them small, fast and mobile. Um, mm. We will get to discuss the, the history of heat rounds leading up to this in a little while, but you know, it's just worth noting, everyone made wrong decisions at this moment of tank history. The British and Americans went with more steel armour, which was also a bad decision. The French and Germans went with um, almost no armour at all, which as history would show was also not the right way, but uh, no one could predict where composite armour was going when they were oh, making these decisions.